Welcome to the 19th Creature Fridays video where we're going to take a look at Muscardinus avalanarius or the hazel dormouse. If you're new here my name's Emily and I'm a zoologist with experience in a range of different types of work and a really big passion for bringing free educational videos about nature to you. It's great to have you here and I'm always ready in the comments below to answer any questions you have on the topics that we cover in these videos. Buried deep in the undergrowth at the base of hedgerows and woodlands, in a few patches of southern England and Wales, tightly woven nests of leaves are starting to move. It's early May and the warm spring air is waking up a female hazel dormouse from hibernation. It's been seven months since she settled into her winter nest and she has just two things on her mind, eating and finding a mate. But first she's got to get back up among the branches of the hedge. Hazel dormice spend the majority of their waking life up among the branches, preferring to be off the ground. This helps her stay out of the way of her most common predators, owls, cats and badgers. We have lost more than half of our hazel dormice since 1995. One of the major reasons for this decline is the destruction of ancient woodland and hedgerows. This species won't leave the branches to cross open spaces, so the loss of these habitats have caused populations to become very isolated and head towards extinction. Traditional forestry practice, like coppicing, once created ideal habitats for hazel dormice, but these practices too are being lost. At around 20 grams upon waking up, our hazel dormouse is searching for food to help her bulk up. It's spring and plant species like hawthorn and oak are flowering, so she heads to these flower buds to start her feast. As the weather gets warmer going into summer, she will also start to hunt the increasing number of invertebrates, like caterpillars. The hazel dormouse is solitary for the majority of its life, and the only time that this female will be around another adult is when the male holding this territory shows up. He will only stick around to mate with her, and then continue on his way, leaving everything related to rearing their offspring to her. As July starts, our female builds her summer nest. Unlike the ground-based winter nest, this one is up in the branches and is created with grasses and bark. This is where she gives birth to her five young. This is her third breezing season, and if she survives to the average age of five years old, she will have at least two more litters in her life. Her offspring are born pink, hairless and blind. By 12 days old, their pale grey fur will have grown in, and in another six days they will be able to see, their large eyes adapted to help them see at night. It's been three weeks since they were born and they're now ready to follow their mother out of the nest, learning how to forage for food alongside her. After another five weeks, it's time for them to make their way out into the world alone. One of her sons heads off in search of food. Between now and October, he must get his weight up to at least 15 grams if he is to survive hibernation. As an adult, he might even eat so much before hibernation that his weight will double to 40 grams, ensuring that he has enough energy to survive. During autumn, the hazel dormouse switches its food source once more, this time able to get its energy from nuts, seeds and berries. Unfortunately for this male, he has strayed into grey squirrel territory. This invasive species is well known for its impact on red squirrels, but it also causes problems for the hazel dormouse. Grey squirrels start to eat nuts earlier in autumn, while hazel dormice are still focused on flowers and invertebrates. So by the time our male needs to look for nuts, there aren't many left. This doesn't bode well for his survival over winter. His sister is faring much better. She's found a nice patch of the food source that they are known for, hazelnuts. The hazel dormouse has a unique way of eating these nuts, running their teeth in a perfect circle parallel to the edge of the hole they created. If you spot a hazelnut with a smooth circular hole in its shell, this is a sign that the hazel dormouse has been in the area. Now that October has hit, our female moves down to ground level, creating her first ever winter nest and curling up inside it. Hazel dormice are 8 centimetres long and have a tail that's the same length. This long fluffy tail gets wrapped over their face during hibernation and helps them keep warm through the winter. She sleeps deeply through the cold weather until suddenly a warm spell wakes her up. All her dormant body processes kick in, using up energy and urging her to go look for food. But when she climbs up into the hedgerow, it's still bare, with no flowers to be found. Even though she survived winter, Climate change means that there are milder temperatures this year and she's woken up too early. There isn't enough of food available for her and her chances of survival aren't looking good. Luckily for the hazel dormouse population, not all of them were woken up. Her sister managed to stay in hibernation until the flowers began to bloom and has emerged from her nest to a variety of food sources. Shortly after emerging from this nest, her fur will change to its characteristic golden brown colour, signalling that she's old enough to have a litter of her own. There are only 45,000 hazel dormice left in small isolated habitat patches. 
However, this species is protected by law, and individuals have been bred in captivity and reintroduced. This male that she's meeting is one such individual. Thanks to these captive breeding programs, the population decline of hazel dormice has started to slow down, suggesting that there might be a positive future for this species. If you want to support me in continuing to create these free educational videos, then check out my new Patreon page. I have five different monthly support tiers to choose from, ranging from just £2 up to the higher tiers where you can vote for video topics, have your name credited at the end of each video, receive personalised art of any UK species, and get one-on-one -on -one consultation calls with me on any nature-related topic of your choice. Subscribe to Ferroforest to keep learning about UK nature.